Nick, our beloved service coordinator, our head service technician, he loves coffee and he also likes spending money. So he spends every day at this cafe that's local to us, as in Go Industrial, and also local to where he lives. It's a cafe called Base Camp. They stock Latitude coffee beans and we're going there today to help them out do a little bit of a reno project. They were talking to Nick, I think it was on the weekend, about their main service counter. I believe they got some timber beams that have just gotten a bit old and a bit weathered. So we're gonna sand them back and do some rolling, do some sealing, just a bit of a clean it up. And along with that, we thought, why not support local and do a bit of a collaboration? So Go X Base Camp is on. What that means is we're putting together a, a nice little merch range. So we're gonna have uh, some stickers, some decals, some shirts. So that's a pretty cool one. We're doing a limited edition press run, um, which you'll see, but they're sort of Go X Base Camp. And then we've done a pretty cool design on the back, which you'll see later. And then we're also gonna do a bit of a, bit of a discount, bit of a cross-branded promotion. So um, we're still working out the particulars, but there'll definitely be some good deals coming and it's all about You know supporting local working with you know people that share your same It's all about working with people that share, you know, your same vibe I guess people that have the same energy stand for the same things, you know cool local family-owned business just like us and uh, Yeah, why not do something fun? It's a bit of a bit of a change of pace so that's where we're heading now they're just down the road and yeah we're gonna go there and uh, do a bunch of filming coffee and a chat in a cafe for the first time ever which is pretty cool I bet Jacob's stoked about that he's behind the camera he's very stoked about that should be good coffee and a chat we're actually in a cafe today how crazy is that delicious I'm gonna be showing you through sort of our process for this why we're using a dustless system and best practices for prep and we're not professionals by any means but over time we sort of picked up a few tips and tricks and working with you guys and taking in your advice so it's all about just growing being better and then teaching people in the community how to do that better it's pretty cool let's get into it <laughs> Because it's, uh, it's quite a weathered surface, it's got a very thick coat of old paint. I'm going to start with the Galaxy 40 grits to strip this right back and just give me a sort of a level playing field to start with. So start there, clean it up, get it flat. Then I'm probably going to move up to maybe 180 and then see how smooth that is from there. But we'll start with these 40s, strip off this paint and go from there. really cool about them is the self-sharpening technology and the coating on them that repels the dust so as you can see here I've done quite a bit of sanding of a pretty hard surface and although the paint itself is not quite hard it is quite flaky and you can see there's quite a lot of sections where it sort of sat into the grain so pulling that back flat definitely requires a bit more sort of sanding and this is a brand new abrasives and uh, I don't know if you can see it, but it's uh, still very sharp, like it's still new. Not even a... And that's the first pad. And that's the first pad. I reckon I'll do this whole section with the one pad. The multi-hole allows you to basically use this on other brands. So if you've got a Festool, for example, you'll be able to use this with that sander. And if you can't line them up, there's another cool tool that Merca has, which is the net interface. So it's basically a pad saver, but it has a net backing, um, which allows you to use any abrasives with any backing pad. But if you're thinking that you need to line up every single hole, with the backing pad, you don't. The 
multi-hole configuration allows you to line this up with any backing pad. They don't have to line up perfectly. You just have to sort of line it up with a few holes so that way you get good suction. I'll show you here. Um, I don't know if you can sort of see, but I've probably got you know one hole there, 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 there. You know, there's quite a lot that isn't sort of there, but. Plenty of suction. Get back to sanding. Yeah, so as said, one abrasive. You can hear this. Listen. You can probably hear that. It's still pretty much as new and yeah, sanded this whole section. This is a P40 in the Galaxy. Sanded this whole section and around here. So I started with uh, basically just the abrasive on the backing pad itself because I wanted to make sure that I had a really hard, firm surface to strip back as fast as possible. And then because what they've done here is they basically hit the surface with a blowtorch, effectively scorching the timber. Um, it's burnt sort of divots and, and little sections in the grain. So you can sort of see like in here, these sort of sections here, here where it follows along the grain. So what I've done after I stripped back sort of the majority of it was I went with an interface pad. So that way I've got a 10 mil sort of foam cushion to help get into these sections and get around them. So I'm not stripping back, you know, some of these holes, they sit sort of five mil into the timber. I don't want to strip back the whole surface five mil. I just want to sort of curve around it because for, for what it is, it doesn't need to be 100 100% flat, smooth, flush surface. And we still want to sort of retain some of the character in what they've done. I reckon that's it now for the 40s. I'm gonna go over with, uh, I'm gonna try hit it with a 120 because it's a pretty soft timber. There is a bit of scratch pattern you can sort of see around from the 40. Obviously they are quite aggressive. So I'll see how I go with the 120. If I can smooth it out and I can flan it from there, great. If not, I'll just jump back down to the 80 and go in between, but we'll see how we go. Should be able to need it up smoothing it out I'm gonna go around these edges here as well and just sort of tidy that up a little bit see what I can do there um, see if I can make it a bit cleaner it's a bit of a learning curve as well so yeah it's good fun tried it with the 120 and you can sort of have a see here um, there's still some sort of scratch pattern in here it's still a little bit rough like obviously it doesn't have to be perfect and we're going to be painting it but i don't know i just want to make it perfect because i'm a perfectionist and if you're going to do something do it right i'm going to go over it lightly with the 80 sort of get rid of these uh these scratches and then i'll go back to the 120 and go from there um yeah i don't want to be sitting on it for 12 years with a 120 trying to get it out it's just a waste of time so Try with the 80, see if I have more luck. That's sort of the whole reason, you know, stepping through the grits, you know, from 40, 60, 80, or 40 to 80, 120, 180. Stepping through those grits, make sure that you have a nice, smooth, even profile from grit to grit, and you're not gonna be left with sort of scratches in between because essentially what's happening is I've gone through with a 40 it's made these big gouges and then I go through with a 120 which you know the grain's significantly smaller so it's not actually getting deep enough to smooth out those grains it's not uh, taking off that next layer so you you can do it but it's just going to take you a lot longer so 40 to 80 80 to 120 that's going to allow me to get rid of all these and uh, yeah we'll see how we go
went to the gym last night. But then if one doing a lot of heavy weights, heavy for me. I'm glad I have a Merca. So you're not applying really any pressure at all? No. Back. I, I hold it firm, you want to keep it flat to the surface. Apply a little bit just with the interface pad, just to get around those edges. But if you're leaning into it or you're pushing very heavily, you're doing it wrong. Use a lower grit, too much pressure, burn out your tools, and uh, yeah, the not fun. The Merc is designed to be powerful enough to strip back without pressure, right? Yeah. If you're doing a lot of heavy stripping, maybe a 5mm isn't for you, maybe an 8mm is for you. It's got a bigger orbit, so it's more aggressive, and uh, it'll do stripping better. Things to consider when picking your sander. When we do get to timber, then the dust system works extremely well. Um, yeah. This is right next to it. Uh, right next to our sanding, I had it on the bench. Um, yeah. No flakes in there, so not drinking timber, just sanding it. Just going through and cleaning up the surface, just getting rid of any leftover excess dust or anything that's settled on the surface, just giving it a wipe through so that way when we go through and paint, we're not painting on top of dust, we're painting on top of the surface. There's two main things that can cause that prematurely, as far as I know, could be wrong, correct me. Um, first thing is painting on top of a non-clean surface. Obviously if you're not putting paint down on the actual surface then you're not getting good adhesion. The second thing would be probably using a good primer. If you're stripping back to a bare surface and doesn't, I don't think it really matters what surface it is, you should always use a primer so that way your paint's adhering to the primer and it gets good adhesion and that's not going to flake off then. Whereas if you just go onto the bare substrate, it can then flake off because it'll get moisture built up in between. It won't actually stick to the surface properly and over time it'll just fall off. What we're going to be using to do the painting is our two Fussy Blokes 100mm rollers. We've got the semi-smooth 10mm nap, the 100mm, and then we've got our Pelican buckets with our little liners in there. And we're just going to fill these up and then do a bit of rolling. It's a nice tight space, it's only a small surface and obviously we don't want to cover everything so hence why we're rolling. 10mm microfiber sleeves, yep, so two fussy blokes, it's a microfiber, it's really good, really durable. It leaves a really good finish, lots of pick up as well, they're quite absorbent. And it's premium fussy. and we are fussy and we're also pelicans. This is weird for us because we usually spray, right? We do usually spray, it's not often we roll but... We actually learned how to spray first before even learning how to brush and roll. It's true. And by learning, I mean watching so many painters every day and just uh, showing us all the tips and tricks on stories. Asking lots of questions and just giving it a go, but yeah. If you can give us tips on rolling. Maybe don't get covered in paint. Picture a youngin that used to live for the summer. Skip used to go run the most all his peers. Now fast forward up a few years. That kid in the kitty grown up and all of a sudden had to pay bills. My current dichotomy me gone from pure curiosity. Guess I didn't know that part of the deal. Or know how quick it get real. Feeling so fleeting. Me and myself need a meeting to make it clearer. Conversate with the mirror. Watch your language when talking to me. I'm the one that's with you. Speak some life in the self. You should opt in the optimism when options turn into prisons. Getting off of the slimmest pickings, remember this place we in is a thief of joy. It's a pelican mouthful of paint. Oh, true. So your brush right now... It's sick. The, so it's got a little magnet in here, so I can do my dabby dab with my brush and do my painting, and then boom, magnets on there. My roller's got like a little uh, little hook sort of section, so he sits in there. So I'm like brushing and rolling, all straight from this little portable boy, and he's pretty stable. Show me your hand connection. That's, oh. that's cool. That's a cool accessory. It's pretty cool. Where can you buy it from? You can buy it from gowind.com.au. That's G-O-I-N-D.com.au. So where do you get your coffee from when you're feeling a bit tired after you bought your Pelican? Oh, after all the late nights of painting, I go to base camp to get my coffee and I drink Latitude Beans. Is that in North Lakes? It is in North Lakes, right next to the big green shed. Oh, mate, bloody beautiful, bloody Target made to play me a fool, I won't fall to the serpent. Swear to God, I've been working like a daughter in surgery. Trying to piece together the pieces and heal up what hurt it. My vice suffice to let down the shows. My passion might lead me out to where life is an open door. Sometimes it just takes it take a little bit more to keep me right. Oh, this shoot the best if you ain't know this would be like. So I miss so much the days we was rolling for pins on vice. And Lord, it didn't miss some nice, but I'm rolling inside this world and keep rolling. This world is.
that's all I'm giving And all of these thrills don't count